consider a point like minus 1, 1. Now, minus 1, 1, let's think about what those numbers do. They are points in a particular coordinate system, the Cartesian coordinate system, where I tell you first, the minus 1 means whatever the x-coordinate is, this case takes one step to the left, and the plus 1 means the y-coordinate, it tells you to do one step up. Now, what a coordinate system is, is a way where you and I can agree on where points are supposed to be placed when I go and draw them. That the minus one one is in a sense an instruction that tells us where should I draw this. But the Cartesian coordinate system is not the only coordinate system out there. In fact, there's many of them. And the one I'm going to show you in this video is called the polar coordinate system. So I'm going to consider the exact same point. I'm not going to change that at all. It's the same point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little line segment from the origin out to this particular point. Now, because this point in Cartesian is at minus 1, 1, I can create a little triangle like this. It's a triangle where it has a side length of 1 and 1, and therefore a hypotenuse by Pythagoras of just square root of 2. Now, if the only thing I told you was this number, the root 2, and I said root 2 is the distance of the point away from the origin, that wouldn't be enough for you to actually draw it, because this root 2 is actually part of an entire circle of points. All of these points are a distance root 2 from the origin. So I have to do a little bit more than that. I have to tell you not just the so-called radius of the circle, but I have to tell you the theta value. Now, I need to give you a convention for this theta. Let's agree on the following. If I start at the origin, and I go out some distance, so imagine I've got the origin, and I'm going to go out here on the positive x-axis, then theta is the angle that happens when I rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So if I start here and I'm pointing in the positive axis, it comes up and I create some little angle theta here. That is my positive axis in a counterclockwise rotation. This, of course, is not the only choice. Maybe you could have chosen the negative axis. Maybe you could have done a clockwise rotation. But we're going to agree on positive x-axis and then counterclockwise rotations. Well, what is this value theta in this specific case? Well, it actually breaks up into two different things. Remember it was this 1, 1, root 2 triangle? Well, there's an inner angle, which is just this portion here inside of the triangle, which is pi over 4. I know that because I know that the 1, 1, root 2 triangle that has an inner angle of pi over 4. And then that's not the entire theta, however, because there is also this portion in the first quadrant, but that's another region, another pi over 2, that comes from the positive x to the positive y, and then goes from the positive y over a further pi over 4. So, in other words, what do I have? I have a radius of the root 2, and I have an angle theta, which is the sum of those two things. Pi over 2 and pi over 4 adds together to be 3 pi over 4. So here's the point. If I tell you this radius, and I tell you this theta, that is enough for you to figure out where I should draw the point. Telling you the root 2 tells you that it's somewhere on that circle, just you don't know where. And then telling you the theta value tells you the exact place, the exact theta angle where it's going to occur. Now, this coordinate system is a bit funky, because there's not only one way to describe any particular point, the way there was only one way to describe the same point in the Cartesian coordinate system. For example, imagine I start here at this 3 pi over 4, and then I rotate one more time around. So that is, I had the 3 pi over 4, and then I do an entire other rotation, and now where I'm at is 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. Well, I'm right back at the same place, because theta is so-called 2 pi periodic. If I go around by 2 pi, I end up exactly where I began. Or I could go around one more time again, and I could end up at 4 pi. So 3 pi over 4 plus 4 pi, it also describes the exact same point. Or, if you preferred, I could say that negative thetas refer to me going not counterclockwise, but clockwise. So, for example, in this scenario, I'm going to start at that positive x again, but I'd go clockwise. When I do a clockwise theta, it is negative. In this case, I've gone minus 5 pi over 4 and arrive back at the same point. Now what we typically do is to take these two numbers, the r and the theta, and put it together into a coordinate like this. We say that r comma theta is equal to this root 2, and in this example, minus 5 pi over 4, and those pair of numbers are my polar coordinates. And so the big moral lesson here is that I've got these two different coordinate systems. I've got this Cartesian coordinates, minus 1, 1 is where this point lives in Cartesian, 
And then I also have all of these different polar coordinates. Their radius is root 2, but their thetas might be different. Let's generalize this a little bit. I've given a generic triangle here that starts at the origin and has some angle of theta where it begins on the positive x-axis and it rotates up some amount theta in the counterclockwise direction. This forms a triangle where I have a radius of r, that's my hypotenuse, and then there's an x and a y for my horizontal and vertical components. Now, there's a relationship between here. So the first relationship is about the r, and that obeys Pythagoras, which is to say that if I'm converting from Cartesian to polar, so you know the x and the y, and you want to find out the r and the theta, then I can find out the r by saying r is just the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is just Pythagoras. Okay, well, what about the theta? Why don't I consider, for example, tangent of theta? Tangent of theta here is just going to be equal to y divided out by x. And if you prefer, you could take arctangent of both sides, you could rewrite this as theta is arctangent of y over x. So this means that if I have an x and y, I can get out the r and the theta. Okay, so now let me go the other way around. Suppose I give you the polar coordinates, I give you the r and I give you the theta, and I ask, what are the Cartesian coordinates? What's the x and the y? Well, consider first cosine of theta and sine of theta. If I think about what cosine of theta is, so this is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it's going to be x over r, and likewise y over r is going to be sine of theta. I can then multiply up by the r, and I have two different formulas, so x is r cos theta, and y is r sine theta. So this is the conversion I need. If you know the r and the theta, you can figure out now the x and the y. Let's practice this in one example. So suppose that I have given you 1 square root 3. And I've told you that 1 square root 3 is in the Cartesian coordinate system. And now I'm asking, well, how do I write that in polar? Note, by the way, I'm not moving the point around at all. The point stays in the same location relative to the origin. The only difference is how I present it, how I write it down, how I tell you an instruction on how to find that point. Okay, so I need to do, how about the radius first? Well, the radius is the square root of the x squared plus the y squared. So I plug that in, the x is 1, so 1 squared, and then root 3, all squared, well, that's square root of 4, which is just 2. And then finally, I want to figure out what my theta is, so I'm going to look at uh, the theta is arctangent of the y over x, so the root 3 over 1. Now, how do I figure out arctangent values? The main thing I do when I do trigonometry is that there's these two different special triangles that involve pi over 3s and pi over 6s, and then the other one involves pi over 4s. And that is the special triangle I use to figure out some of these funkier trig values. So for example, the ones related that's got a root 3 in it is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. This is one where the one interior angle is exactly twice the other. There's a pi over 3 and a pi over 6. And then if I consider tangent, remember theta is equal to arctangent. So I'm going to consider tangent first. And the question is, well, what value of theta has tan of that value equaling root 3 over 1. Well, in this case, it's pi over 3. Indeed, if you took tangent of pi over 3, you get root 3 over 1. And therefore, arctangent of root 3 over 1 is pi over 3. They're inverse functions. Well, this is the one special triangle I'll just put up just for your reference. The other special triangle, the 1, 1, root 2, with interior angles pi over 4 and pi over 4. These two triangles are both very important to have in your fingertips. Final thing I want to talk about is writing down a grid in your respective coordinate system. So here I am back in Cartesian, and I've put up like as if I was drawing this on some grid paper. So what is a grid line in a coordinate system? Well, one of these vertical grid lines is just me telling you what the x is, one of the coordinates. I'm saying x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, and I give even spacing on my x, or the horizontal ones, those are even spacing of fixed values of y. y equal to 0, y equal to 1, y equal to 2. So what a grid system looks like is just you taking the coordinates, you fixing special values of them that are sort of regularly spaced, and drawing those special valued lines down. So how is this going to work out in polar coordinates? Well, it looks a little bit cool, actually, but it's this. So root 2, 3 pi over 4, our point lives here. Notice that what I've done is not change the point, it's changed, in effect, the grid paper. So these straight lines, these radial lines, those occur at fixed values of the theta, of the angle that you're talking about. 
So, for example, I've put up here a lot of the special values, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, and so on. And so you can see that as you choose these special values, these nice fixed values of theta, then you're going to get a whole bunch of radial lines. Well, what about the circles? A circle represents a fixed value of r. So in this example, I have these fixed values where r is equal to, say, 1 or a half, and that's going to create an entire circle. It's the circle with that fixed radius. So the idea is the exact same thing with this grid system I've come up in polar coordinates. Namely, all I'm doing is I'm fixing either fixed values of r or fixed values of theta. It just it looks a little bit different. And you can use this to sort of help you sketch where a particular point ought to be.